welcome to Tala Talks NICU. I'm Dr. Tala, and today this is a really short video on answering the most important question that parents ask, which is, when can my child go home? So today I'm kind of going to go through all of that. Generally, before I start on my spiel, I'll tell them roughly around the due date. In babies that have older gestational ages, then that can be a couple of weeks before the due date. And in the micro preemies, it can be several weeks after the due date. But kind of the due date is a good rough guide. But more importantly, I'll add that there really isn't a gestational age a baby has to be to be able to go home. They just have to be able to do everything in a safe way that a full-term baby can do. So these are the things that a baby that's being discharged should be able to do. So A, he has to be able to maintain his temperature in an open crib. Generally, babies need one more layer than what you're wearing. So they have to be able to maintain their temperature. And for example, just like a little onesie and maybe pajamas on top of that, they can't have like eight sheepskin blankets and hats and whatever else on top of them to maintain their temperature. B they have to be able to feed in a safe way. So not having Brady's and DSATs and everything whilst they're feeding. This may end up being with a gastric tube for them to go home on. C, they have to feed enough to show sufficient weight gain, especially if they are in an open crib. Remember, when a baby is in an open crib, they have to use a little bit more energy to stay warm. So if they're using all their energy to stay warm, they might not be gaining weight. So we have to show that in an open crib with a baby eating that set volume, the baby is gaining weight. D, they have to not be having any events. So no apneas, no Brady's, no DSATs. We'll do a whole separate video on this, but generally it's a lot more concerning if a baby has an event when they're actually sleeping or it lasts longer than 20 seconds or it involves color change or needs stimulation. So somebody needs to like stimulate the baby to get the baby out of the event. And depending on your unit's policy, you might need five to seven event-free days before the baby is able to go home. E, obviously the baby has to be able to breathe in a safe way with adequate oxygenation, so getting the oxygen in, and adequate ventilation, so getting the carbon dioxide out. This may mean that the baby does need to go home on oxygen or sometimes even with a trach on a vent. F, pass the car seat test. So if a baby was born small or premature, we have to show that they are stable and safe sitting in a car seat. So basically what that involves is putting them in a car seat on a monitor for 90 minutes and making sure that their neck has enough strength to keep their chin up. Sometimes the chin can kind of drop forward and block the airway and that will cause apneas, Brady's and DSAP. Generally, the smallest car seats that are made, and there are a few exceptions, are made for infants that are four pounds or more, which is about 1800 grams. So many units don't let babies go home until they are at least four pounds. C, the caretakers of the baby have to show their ability to be able to take care of the baby at home. Obviously, if there's lots of complicated equipment, then they have to be trained with that and they have to show their proficiency. Sometimes, even if a baby is on no extra equipment, it's just nice for the parents to be able to room in for a night or two to do all the cares for the baby before they transition home. H, and this one's a bit obvious, the baby has to be over whatever brought them into the unit in the first place, whether it was hypoglycemia or rule out syphilis or sepsis or pneumonia or whatever else, they have to be completely treated from that by the time that they go home. So that's pretty much what I always tell parents when they are asking me when their kids can go home. 